So, why has humanity derailed from its intended path? And why is it so hard to really develop ourselves? Well, there are some internal and some external factors. But the end result is that our spirits have gone basically lazy, have become a little bit stupid and passive. That's the short of it. So, if we look at it, our spirit can exist in various states of being. It can be in a very uh, passive state, and if it's in its passive state, it is not actually exerting control over the life. It is just following the patterns which are already laid out for it. And as I explained earlier, like with us being made up out of three parts, so it is not controlling the yeah the earth impulse so it will just continue the impulses which it received from its uh, yeah parents from the current culture from its instincts and it will also continue the path it had as a spirit without changing that so it is just coasting along on inertia you could say so the next step for humanity was actually is actually to go back to where humans used to have a very strong uh, fiery impulse that they had a very active spirit which wanted to um, work with everything which wanted to influence everything and this is for instance if you look at uh, uh, at ancient greece where you had the development of democracy, uh, philosophy, um, uh, logic, argumentation. Um, here, people's spirits were actively working, creating, um, exploring. And you could say the Renaissance was also a similar period, where you had the ideal of the Homo Universalis, the man who was developed in all things. And right now a Homo Universalis is yeah, usually not hired because they're not specialized in one field. They uh, don't have enough experience for the job at hand because we've, in a way, made everything into little squares. And things which don't fit our pattern are just discarded. So we're not aiding people like this. Um, but but also it is no longer the standard, it is no longer what people try to be or which we are supported to be with our education, with society. So how humans slip down in a way from being in a very active state into a very passive state is largely by the ego development. So the ego is a survival mechanism. We uh, create it to allow yeah, our spirit to focus on what it wants to do and it doesn't have to micromanage all these little things in life. So your spirit is not interested in going to work 9 to 5 every day and sitting behind a desk. Uh, spiritually there is nothing interesting to such an activity. It can be meditative maybe. but. And the same with uh, lots of, from the spirit's perspective, perpetuous problems which pop up, like, oh, what should I eat? What should I drink? Uh, what should I answer to that question? Or how should I um, assert myself socially or emotionally or things like this? So, because it, the spirit is not interested in these things, these things are given to the ego. You handle it, you take care of my life. And then the spirit is free to focus on its development, on art, on exploring the world. The problem is that, in a way, these little routine things are growing in the amount of time they take. Society is getting more complex. The pressures of society are getting more and more. And more and more of our time and attention is therefore also being consumed by the ego. And there's 
less and less left for the spirit. So if you look at the more natural life we used to lead, well, if it was the good season, then um, yeah, you would be planting uh, or uh, reaping a harvest. And well, for the other half of the year, you had enough food. It was just stocked up, so you had time to work on your art, on your literature, on your poetry, to uh, listen to other people, to think about things, to develop yourselves. So it was kind of a 50-50 arrangement of like the ego doing stuff and your spirit doing stuff. And this is actually a naturally healthy uh, system. But if we look now, how much time do we really have? Because of course we have to go to work, which is about eight hours a day. Well, then of course we have to sleep, we have to eat, and then come all the other social pressures. You have to do your administration, you have to fill out your tax forms, you have to pay your utility bills. Um, and then of course there's all the other uh, expectations like uh, wear the right clothes and la 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 la, see your family. And how much time do we still have left? How much time do we give our spirits? I think it's, for most people, probably less than 5%. So the ego gets very used to being in control because we've had lives like this increasingly much, especially since industrialization took place, where the ego is, yeah, getting very used to being the master of humanity rather than the spirit. So ultimately the lower powers have learned to ignore the higher impulses, the higher powers. And it's very difficult for these higher impulses, higher powers, to get the lower powers to listen. Because kind of as an emergency survival mechanism, the, once there is a lower impulse, it in a way pushes out the higher impulses. Because if I'm philosophizing about you know, the nature of the cosmos and I see a car coming down the road where I'm walking on, well, I should stop philosophizing, I should get off the road so I don't get become roadkill. So it is very normal and healthy for these lower impulses to push out the higher impulses. And unfortunately the same goes with everything. So also when I get angry, I will also stop thinking or considering other people as my brother or other things. I will just be angry and I'll want to slap somebody. This is how things work. And we need to teach these lower parts of ourselves to respect the higher parts of ourselves because naturally they will become stronger when there is an emergency or when there's a problem on their level it needs to be solved on their level if I don't have anything to eat my ego should step in and say like okay we need to survive here um, I will go and do what is necessary to survive this is fine but also when there is no such crisis, the ego should relinquish control and the ego should do it in such a way that it is in harmony, in concordance with my spirit and with higher powers. So the ego in itself is not a problem. It is more the misbehavior of the ego which can be a problem. That it becomes disharmonious with the higher impulses and ultimately therefore also the higher impulses cannot talk with the ego anymore. So you could say we are suffering from an internal communication breakdown because the different parts of ourselves are not really yeah, in concert in harmony with each other. Ultimately the higher impulses should guide the lower impulses. So I should not be guided by my instincts, but my instincts should be in a way disciplined or shaped by my spirit and my spirit itself 
should be shaped and developed by gods, deities, spiritual masters, uh, spirit guides, angels and higher beings. So the lower part should be in a way humble and wise enough to accept the mold which is coming down from higher levels. So every level needs to respect uh, yeah, you could say the hierarchy. But yeah, this is kind of a tricky system, unfortunately. Um, because society has become increasingly uh, competitive, increasingly violent, most people now live in a state of constant stress, of constant fear, which is activating the ego and granting power to the ego and not so much to the spirit. It's also a system of leadership. Because if everything is going all right, we don't need government. If nobody is threatening me, is um, yeah, bothering me, or is if I have no problem, I don't need a government. I'm perfectly happy, I'm fine, I just do my thing and I'm quite all right, thank you. So when do we need government? When there is crime, when there is threat, when there is argument to uh, act as a judge between the two parties. So it is in the interest of government to maintain a state of emergency, uh, a state of fear in the population. Uh, if because this is their, you could say, uh, right of existence. So governments will do whatever they can to maintain such a state of emergency, usually in cooperation with the media, so that people will give more and more of power and control to the government, and the government can perpetuate itself. Um, government is at best a symbiotic system, at worst a parasitical system. And um, unfortunately, government or quality of government has been going down a lot since the Second World War. Um, there are various reasons for that, uh, one of them being also the architecture, the other one of indeed the shift, continuing shift from in a way people who are moral leaders to people who are deal makers. Um, so there's many reasons for that, it's a complex issue to fix government but unless we fix government, we will find it very hard to take control over our lives as spirits, as higher powers. We will continue our being derailed. So to change things, we either need to, in a way, find a way to not to allow the, the toxin the toxic environment which we've created in modern society to influence us so much or we can try to compensate for that toxicity by isolating ourselves by living in a different way by looking for social support with people who are of a spiritual nature or more conscious nature and forming little yeah, mini communities mini tribes which just have their own way of developing of growing um, but to live in such a way it has to be tolerated by society because society tends to intrude upon these yeah, more or less autonomous groups who want to do things their own way and live their own way. Though so many of these autonomous groups are not truly autonomous, they are reactionary. They are resisting society, they are trying to go against it but they are still not following their own spirits or following their own path. They're just choosing a path which is opposite or different from society, but resisting is still being controlled by it. It's just in a photonegative manner. <laughs> so that's also not a, an option. A person has to be a true, a truly free person. You could say an almost an anarchist, willing to say like, I don't need protection. I don't need to be led. I'm willing to take responsibility for myself. I'm willing to take responsibility for my own life, for my own development. And of course, 
You can accept other people's teachings, you can accept other people's guidance, but you realize that it's down to you. You're the one who has to do it, nobody else. And society can help you, it can hinder you, ultimately it doesn't matter. It is your journey, it is your race which you're trying to win. And this is a very important attitude to have, to see your life as, in a way, um, a race or a plan. And there are many hurdles in this race, many obstacles you need to cross. It's more like a triathlon. And of course you have to pace yourself. You can't just force change upon yourself. But focus is the important part. If you don't lose your focus, everything which happens to you um, will be either recognized as just a distraction or something which has to be dealt with as quickly and as simply as possible or an opportunity for you to grow, to develop, to increase your skill and become a more complete human. And it's a self-enforcing system. The more focus you have, the more progress you make, the more strong your flow will become. So you need to, in a way, start to enjoy um, the progress in your life. And when you're really starting to enjoy it and you um, develop a hunger for it, a hunger for self-development, a hunger for growth, a hunger for solving your problems, of uh, overcoming your obstacles, and then this spiritual hunger will become a dominant force. And lessons will come to you. You will see them whenever you're watching a movie, reading a book, talking to somebody. You will recognize, okay, this is something I can use, that is something I can use, because there's a constant attention. You could say there's a meditative state, you're always watching your own progress, and you're also watching all the signals and all the empowerments you're constantly receiving from the cosmos. And the more you receive, the more enthusiastic they will be to help you and to give things to you. So, but it's very hard to get this engine started. Uh, because there's always distractions and things which make you grind to a halt. Because you might get sick, uh, you might get an accident, you might lose your job. Um, there's always these things which, in a way, halt the progress of the spirit and then put the ego in charge again. <laughs> and the ego is then, yeah, uh, there, of course, naturally, as an emergency mechanism. But just like government, the ego, in its best case, is a symbiotic thing, which helps the rest to grow and to flourish. In the worst case, it's a parasitical thing, which is taking all your time, all your energy, and will just consume all your life and all your attention and in the same way we have to yeah, uh, control our government and make it a good one we also have to control our ego and make it a good one because we need it as to deal with emergencies to deal with threats but we also need it to leave us alone the rest of the time so, personally, I think also that the horrible governments we're in generally having are also a reflection of our horrible self-government. Because most people's egos are not very enlightened or social or uh, well-developed or in concert with higher powers or accepting higher powers. So there's quite a task ahead of us to really allow this fire, these energies which we are receiving from the higher worlds to flow through into our spirit. So our spirit needs to be able to learn, to allow itself to be inspired, to be transformed, to be humble, to receive them. And then that impulse needs to go down to our ego, which also needs to learn to be receptive to these higher impulses and to the spirit. And it needs to realize its own role as a servant. Because the government is created by us to serve us, but it's no longer our servant, it has become our master. 
in the same way it is with our ego. Our ego is not just serving us, giving us time, um, doing all the little chores so we can philosophize and create art. No, it's become our master, it's our boss. It tells us like, okay, you have to get up, you have to go to work, you have to earn money, you have to fill out these papers. So you could say we're suffering from in internal mismanagement, internal bureaucracy almost. Where the position the, of leadership, the bureau of yeah, uh, governance has been yeah, taken in a revolution by the ego rather than our spirit or the higher powers who should rightfully be guiding us who should be the boss in our lives. So we need a counter-revolution to put things back in place. Okay, I hope that will um, give you some understanding of uh, what makes it so difficult for us as individuals but also for us as humanity to make real progress in the world and in our own spiritual development. <laughs>